This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Super Bowl 57 is all set. We have got the Eagles facing off with the Chiefs in Super Bowl 57 coming up in just 13 days, which means we have 13 days to pick apart both these teams, analyze every which side of this game and get you set for what should be, I think, a pretty fun game. And I'm excited for this one. We're going to break down what my numbers say. The first look at Super Bowl 57 breakdown, what my numbers say compared to the betting markets over at FanDuel Sportsbook. We've already seen a lot of movement in those markets already, similar to what we saw last week. So I think it'll be a fun one. We'll recap last week as well and uh, get you a first look to lock in those initial bets for this year's big game. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com. Here, like I said, to give my first look at Super Bowl 57, breaking down what my numbers say about Chiefs versus Eagles relative to the market. There is a money line I like in this game. We're going to break down that, the adjustments I'm making to account for the Chiefs' health, and uh, much more to get you ready for this game. Before I dive in, though, do want to give you a quick reminder to make sure you are subscribed to covering the spread because we had this first look for today. The rest of the week, though, a lot of other sports discussion. We've got some PGA coming up. We've got NBA, NHL. I'll sneak in some NASCAR. I promise I'll plug it at the end of the show so you're not subjected to it. If you don't want to listen to it, we'll talk about the clash there. Also, EPL coming up on Friday. So a big week here on the show. Then next week, we're going to have a lot of Super Bowl stuff coming your way. Breaking down props, breaking down the game, matchups, stuff like that. And all that will be in this exact same feed and up on the FanDuel uh, YouTube page. So. Search for Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Hit subscribe there. And also, if you want the video version, check us out over on the FanDuel YouTube page. Thank you to those of you who have subscribed already this year. The only app you need at your Super Bowl party is FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Download FanDuel now. 57 with a no sweat first bet. You'll get up to three thousand dollars back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win FanDuel lets you bet on everything from the money line to point spreads to who will score a touchdown all in a top rated sports book that is safe secure and super easy to use best of all you can get paid your winnings instantly so join FanDuel today to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57 Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. $10 deposit required. Refund issued is not withdrawable bonus bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Kansas and Wyoming, 1-800-522-4700 or in Kansas, ksgamblinghealth.com. Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In Maryland, mdgamblinghealth.org. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope y In West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Now let's dig in here to Super Bowl 57 breakdown. What we're seeing here in this matchup is a really fun one because the Chiefs yesterday had a 62% success rate on late downs. And obviously you can talk about, hey, you know, they got an extra third down, stuff like that. The referee stuff happens, you know. it's It happens every single way. Happened to go against the Bengals a couple of times in key spots yesterday. But overall, the Chiefs yesterday, 62% success rate on late downs. The league averages here is 44%. So the Chiefs were cooking, even with a hobbled quarterback in Patrick Mahomes, and three injured wide receivers. So 62% yesterday, league average 44%. For the full season, including playoffs, the Chiefs' late down success rate is now 52.94%. That is the best mark in the league by a full percentage point. There's only one team in the league within 1.5 percentage points of them. And that team is the Eagles. So when I run my new model's power rankings this year with no adjustments, these wind up being the best two teams, uh, the, the best team in the AFC versus the best team in the NFC. And 
what more could you ask for? You get two really fun offenses, two good enough defenses. At least the Eagles is uh, good enough. Chiefs can be, you know, up and down for sure. But we get the best team in the AFC versus the best team in the NFC. I don't really think we can complain too much about that. So we now turn toward the market. Right now, FanDuel has a total in this game at 49 and a half. The spread is Eagles minus one and a half uh, with minus 118 on the one and a half. So it seems like we're more likely to get that to two than to get that down to one or anything like that. Uh, Eagles money line is minus 126. The Chiefs are at plus 108. So it's a relatively even game that features a lot of points and favors the Eagles. So where do my numbers line up relative to those markets? If I make no adjustments, no adjustments on the Chiefs side, I get the Chiefs minus 2.92 and the Chiefs minus 1.24 based on the model. Again, the reason why the second model, the newer model is lower on them is because it assumes they'll regress on late downs and they haven't yet. So the other one's more okay saying, yeah, they're probably just good. Uh, that's why it has it at 2.92 and uh, the new one has it at Chiefs minus 1.24. Either way, both leaning towards the Chiefs and the total with no adjustments is 51.53. So that would, you know, push you towards the over. If we had Mahomes and the receivers fully healthy, I would take the Chiefs and I would take the over at 49 and a half. But I do think we need some sort of downward adjustment in there for the Chiefs. The question is, how much? How much is it worth with the receiver health, with Mahomes' ankle, stuff like that? As of now, we don't know which receivers will be able to play. I'd assume Justin Watson will be able to go. He was inactive yesterday due to an illness. So he'll be healthier. And that means if they have Watson, they'll have MVS, they'll have Sky Moore, they'll have guys like that. And as a result, I think we can say pretty definitively that the Chiefs will be healthier in two weeks than they were last night. And maybe they get one of Juju Smith-Schuster, Kadarius Toney, Michael Hardman able to play. Otherwise, it's Watson, Marquez Valdez-Scantling, and Sky Moore, along with probably a lot of multiple tight end sets. So I'm going to put a downgrade in there for the receiver health because I can't assume all those guys will be back. As for Mahomes, I'm not going to downgrade him as much, at least not as much as I did for this this week. He played through the injury. He was efficient on late downs, as mentioned. He now has two weeks to get healthier. So I'm going to downgrade them for the wide receivers, I think, more so than for Mahomes. I'm also going to downgrade the Chiefs rushing offense. I did that last week, too, for a couple reasons. The first one is that Mahomes won't scramble as much. Those are key for rushing efficiency. So downgrade because of that. But second, the Chiefs offense, like most offenses, is better, more efficient running under center than from the gun. And they did still run under center a bit last night, but it definitely did skew more towards the gun than usual. At least anecdotal. I didn't check the numbers on that, but it seemed like they were running more so from shotgun versus under center than what they typically do. And the rushing offense really did struggle last night. I would not be shocked if that carries over. Now, if Mahomes is healthier, I would bet they go back to what they typically do. But I don't want to assume that fully. So I'm going to put a slight downgrade to the passing offense because of the receivers. And then I'll also downgrade the rushing offense due to both scrambling and the more gun heavy approach. I also have to adjust the Eagles up uh, to scrub out the two games with Gardner Minshew. Passing efficiency in those games is pretty even, but their rushing efficiency went way down. So after making those tweaks, then where do I stand compared to the market? Both models the new one and the old one do still have the Chiefs favored just by less than they were before. The traditional model, the one that I've had more success with this year, has the Chiefs favored by 1.49. The other model has the Chiefs by 0.20. So that game effectively a toss-up in the new model, which means both these models are showing value in the Chiefs money line. So I'm going to take that right now. It's plus 108 at FanDuel Sportsbook. You can get it at plus 110 at some other spots. So as always, the caveat is shop around. I think that I'm okay taking this now. Last week, we saw that crazy movement where the Chiefs were minus 116. They got as long as plus 120, I think, at one point. We saw all that movement. And last night, we saw similar stuff where the uh, I think FanDuel had the Eagles opening at minus 112 on the money line. And it lengthened really fast. So. 
we could see more movement, but then overnight we saw it come back down. So based on that, based on the overnight movement, I don't think we'll see this get a lot longer than plus 110 or plus 108. So, and given the adjustments I'm making on both sides, given the fact that I'm accounting for Mahomes being bagged up, the wide receivers already, I do feel confident in my number being right here. And that number tells me to bet the Chiefs on the money line. If you can get plus two, I'm fine scaling that bet with the money line if you want the points and the money line. But honestly, for me, I'm just going straight money line. I'm living that way personally. It's more so a personal preference. If you want to add the plus two, I get it. Not opposed. Uh, I think that would make sense. The other ripple effect of the downgrades to the to the Chiefs offense is that I no longer have interest in the total. My new number uh, has it at 49.97. So it is still over the total of 49 and a half. And you could say there's value in the over, but it's less than half a point. 51 is a key number. I would get, I would get that. Uh, that's a good thing. But I still just don't think there's quite enough value to, to bet this right now. If it were to shift, I'm open to revisiting. And honestly, with the Super Bowl, you see a lot of public money. So you do see decent movement in the market at times. If this were to shift, I'm open to revisiting. I don't think my number will budge much from 49.97 because there's no wind to account for in this game. So if that were to come down, I could see myself buying it. I'd want to at least get across 49. 49 is not a huge key number. It's about two and a half or so percent. Uh, it's not a huge key number, but it helps for sure. So if it goes down under 49, maybe I revisit at that point. But for right now, I'm probably going to hold off. Other route to potentially betting this would be if we get good news on Mahomes or the pass catchers. But for right now, I'm probably avoiding the full game total and sticking with the other markets. So for right now, uh, sticking with just the Chiefs money line at plus 108. One other thing I wanted to discuss quickly as a hit Pacheco, because we won't be discussing our, our full prop show until next week, but with sports books focusing so much on this game, I wouldn't be shocked to see a lot of props go up. You actually got some interesting ones up already, like some uh, unique markets at FanDuel already. So I think we'll see some, some props going up. Anytime touchdown score uh, markets are up already, they're very short, so I wouldn't bet them right now. They'll likely lengthen, but there is some stuff up there. So I want to talk about Pacheco's role last night because he played a 56% snap rate in that game. That was Pacheco's second highest mark of the year. It was his first time above 50% since week 12. Jarek McKinnon had his, his breakout in week 14. So this is the first time since then we saw Pacheco play more than half the snaps. Pacheco is less efficient running from shotgun than under center, but he's a lot better out of shotgun than McKinnon is. So if they decide to go with a shotgun heavy offense again, that would be a good thing for Pacheco. So that's a positive there. He also had six targets in this game, which doubled his previous high. So I would take a long look at Pacheco's rushing plus receiving number. Once that's up, it is not up as of right now, but once it is up, I check that out. His anytime touchdown prop is plus 115. Nope. I think that's too short, but I, again, I think that market entirely will lengthen at some point. So not there now, but we'll check it out later. And then finally, I would at least give some thoughts. I don't tend to bet MVP markets because the hold on them tends to be prohibitive. Uh, but if you're in a state that allows betting MVP markets, I don't think Pacheco at 50 to one is like the dumbest thing I've ever seen. He's the same odds as Darius Slay. Uh, you know, Darius Slay's a great football player, but he's a defensive player. Hassan Reddick's at 50 to 1 too. He's the same odds as Jerick McKinnon, despite having a lot more of a role than him last night. So if I were to bet an MVP, which I, again, have not and likely will not, I would lean towards Pacheco 50 to 1 for a Super Bowl MVP. I'm sure a lot of you having like, Damian Williams flashbacks to that 49er Super Bowl where he probably should have won it and didn't. Uh, but I think Pacheco is undervalued there. So he's a guy I'm looking at primarily for props as someone who could be undervalued in the market uh, once props initially go up. Again, not the anytime touchdown market. That number is too short for me. But other spots, rushing plus receiving, maybe some pass catching props. Pacheco will be the first guy. I am turning to there. So we'll have plenty of coverage around uh, this game in the week coming up. Going to be a fun one for sure. 
Next week will be our primary Super Bowl focus, but hopefully this gives you a, a good palate cleanser uh, to get your chops wet before we dive in the full prop offerings. Now, before we wrap up for today, got to go back into last week and recap what went down here on the show. Um, of course, my two bets from the Tuesday or Monday show last week were the two money lines. I had the 49ers at plus 122 and the Chiefs at minus 116. 49ers moved against me the entire week, uh, closed around 134, I believe. And I don't know how that would have played out if Brock Purdy hadn't gotten hurt. I don't think it would like the Eagles played well. So I don't think I can chalk that up as like being as Purdy being hurt. And like, I benefited from good variants in the Chiefs game with all the, all the referee and stuff. So, you know, it happens and it's a bummer to lose that way, but they were tied seven, seven with Josh Johnson in there. So, you know, I can only say maybe I wasn't totally wrong, but I I'm okay with that loss. I think that makes a lot of sense. So, and the number market moved against me too. So, Probably just a bad loss, and that's okay. Uh, the Chiefs won. I got it at 116 on Monday. It, again, moved all the way across uh, where they were plus money, like plus 120 at one point, and then closed at around minus 134, I believe, somewhere in there. So did get good closing line value. Did not get the best number. The route to getting good CLV was a nightmare. Massive headache. But hey, you know, we'll take it anyway. Take the win there, regardless of the way we got there. And uh, have that. The other one I mentioned, uh, this is more of a Thursday and Friday thing. Thursday, I mentioned uh, with Ryan, we were talking that if the total for, or if the wind speed got up uh, another degree, another another uh, another mile per hour, I'd show value in the under for 49ers and uh, Eagles. It did go up, finished at 12 miles per hour. So I wanted taking the under. I had it at 44 and a half, and it was at 46 and a half at that time. Closed at 45 and a half, and the under hit there pretty easily. So Depends if you were listening on Thursday, Friday. I'm not going to count that as like an official recommendation because it was mentioned in passing on Thursday, Friday, but uh, did go one and one on the official ones and then uh, had the under for 49ers versus Eagles as well. Speaking of Ryan, that's Ryan Williams. Check him out on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. He was our guest on Thursday for the full NFL preview. Ryan, three and five on the week. He had the Chiefs plus one when we talked about it on Thursday morning. He had a Travis Kelsey anytime touchdown to even money. That one hits. And then he had Samaj P. Ryan over two and a half receptions at plus 116. P. Ryan finished with just four yards, but at three receptions. So hitting all three of those. The misses for Ryan were the 49ers plus 126. He was on board with me there. He had the over for Eagles 49ers at 46 and a half. He had Debo Samuel over 20 and a half rushing yards. Again, uncertain how much of that had to play into the Purdy injury because Debo had six rushing attempts but there was no effectiveness on them because they didn't have to worry about the pass. So that hurt there. He had Jalen Hurts throw a pick at plus 102 um, and Pertz over one and a half passing touchdowns at plus 108. Again, script playing a big factor there where they threw 25 times and none of those were like super risky throws. There were some good throws in there. Like the Devonte Smith one was sick, but like, um, you know, uncertain how that would play out if the script had been different. But uh, other one for Ryan was a Tyler Boyd in a touchdown at plus 280. He got hurt. He had two receptions before then for 40 yards, but uh, getting hurt there, kind of a bummer. So unsure of how things would have played out if not for the Purdy injury, not for the Boyd injury, but uh, that's how Ryan's week went there. We have Brandon Gadula on talk props on Friday. Uh, Brandon went four and two on his prop recommendations. The hits were uh, George Kittle under 46 and a half receiving yards. He finished with 32. He had Joe Burrow over 24 and a half completions. That was a minus 122. Burrow finished with 26 there. Brandon had Kadarius Tony under 35 and a half receiving yards. He got hurt and had, I think, like 17 or so. So, as always, injuries go both ways. You're allowed to bet unders too. He did with uh, Kadarius Tony. That one worked out for him. Um, and then the other one was Brandon also had a Kelsey touchdown at minus 105. Anytime touchdown there. Uh, so both Brandon and Ryan hitting on that one. Misses for Brandon were Purdy over seven and a half rushing yards. You know, again, injuries happen. Just kind of the name of the game. If you bet long enough, you know, injuries can break both ways for you, especially if you're not just betting overs at all times. Um, so that can definitely happen. Uh, and then AJ Brown, anytime touchdown at plus 155. The other one in there for Brandon, as uh, it was primarily rushing touchdowns for the Eagles in this game. So, four to a week for Brandon on props. Uh, other one we had last week was Brandon talking PGA for the Farmers Insurance Open. He went uh, two and two. 
Uh, the hits were Sung Jae M to be the top Asian player. He was plus 230, beat out Hideki Matsuyama by, I think, two strokes that one. Sung Jae finished fifth, and Hideki was like ninth or so. So good hit there. Other one was a dead heat. Uh, Dean Burmester was top South African at plus 170. He tied with Dylan Fratelli. So dead heat rules apply there. It's not a full win at plus 170, but. Still getting some money back in there with that one. Mrs. Sir Brandon were the two outrights. He had Will Zala Torres at 14 to 1, Xander Shoffle at 11 to 1 to win. Uh, and it was uh, Max Homa, uh, fun guy to follow on Twitter, rallying to win that event. Uh, I thought I saw someone who had a Sam Ryder ticket at 300 to 1, trying to decide if they're going to cash out. I hope they did. Um, get your money there. But uh, Max Homa, fun guy to root for, good win for him, and good week overall for Brandon across both PGA and the NFL. Find Brandon on Twitter at Kajula13. Check out his golf work over at Number Fire. We'll also talk some PGA this week over on our DFS show, the Heat Check Fantasy Podcast, and here tomorrow on Covering the Spread. Speaking of which, that is all that we have here for today. PGA coming up this week, NBA, NHL, EPA, NASCAR, all in the same feed, setting up for next week to talk more Super Bowl props and much more to get you set for Super Bowl 57 between the Chiefs and the Eagles. Make sure you are subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts to get these as they are posted to get those best numbers before markets shift after we discuss them here on the show. And also check out the FanDuel YouTube page if you want the video version of these shows. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Hope you enjoyed the conference championship games. I hope you had a profitable week. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to get you said for uh, the at and I think it's Pebble Beach next week for PGA. We'll talk to Brandon about that tomorrow and confirm exactly which event it is. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 